There are two reasons why your play controller in Godot 4 sucks, and this is how you fix it. <laughs> oh, this is a terrible intro. I, I couldn't think of an intro for this video. And there are all those all those YouTubers, they, they, they have those lists, you know? Like, 10 reasons why your game sucks, and this is how to fix it. No, but jokes aside, uh, I do know exactly what your play controller is missing, and that is Coyote Time and Buffer Jump. When my community asked me if I knew about Coyote Time and Buffer Jump, I of course said, absolutely I know. I know about Coyote Time and Buffer Jump. So after doing a bit of research, I mean implementing the knowledge that I already possess, my character moves as smooth as butter. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about the Coyote Time and Buffer Jump and show you how to implement this in your own Godot 4 game. Some of you gave feedback on my previous videos saying that the titles were a bit clickbaity, promising tutorials, but focusing more on devlogs and showcases. Um, so this time around, I'm gonna be completely honest up front. This is both a dev vlog and a tutorial on the Coyote time and buffer jump. If you want to skip the devlog part, use the chapters. It's all good. Why don't you love me? <laughs> also, keep an eye on the pinned comment. I'm still a Godot noob, so if I made any mistakes or I feel like things could be improved slightly, I will put it there. And with that, let me tell you all about the Coyote time and buffer jump, how I implemented it in my game and how to implement it in your game at the very end of this video. Let's go. Alrighty, let me show you the status of my game. It has been a while, I think five weeks since my left devlog. There's a reason for it. Um, I, I bought a house. Yeah, here you go. Well, buying houses is very time consuming, so I couldn't really work on the game that much. It also didn't help that I was very busy with my real job and I was having this streak of colds like like weeks after week. So busy weeks, uh, but I did do a quite a few things and I'm going to tell you all about it. In the last devlog, I showed you the state machine and also some early combat and the environment, the level itself also was starting to shape up pretty well, but I threw it all away. Yes, <laughs> not, not even joking. Um, there was a good reason for it though. I felt like the overall project structure, the folders and the overall code was just not good enough. I gained so much knowledge that I really felt the need to have a fresh start. Also put the whole project in GitHub, like a, a proper um, a code repository. So that is exactly what I did. I threw away everything, started over. I made a state machine based on the Limbo AI and I pretty much refactored the whole movement system of my little turtle. Um, let me just show you. Um, this is where we are right now. One of the more noticeable changes compared to the previous one is the decal circle. I think that's how you call it. It's the circle that indicates the place where your character is about to land. It's still work in progress, but it should really help the player with the depth perception, uh, which causes lots of problems in many 3D games. And the next thing that I did, which is pretty hard to showcase, you should probably play the game yourself, but the overall controller is just way smoother. It's way more responsive, way more snappy. So yeah, it might not look like much, but Oh, yeah, no, I did do lots of things that you guys didn't see yet, uh, or at least those who are not on Discord. I added a bunch of shell animations. Look at that. It's so cool. Like, you can go into your shell from idle, and it looks like this. Whoop. Just a basic in shell animation. If you move slightly, you have this little, little deceleration. But if you run faster, you will do the slide. It opens up so many cool possibilities in terms of game design. You can go through fires without being harmed. You can go through small spaces. The list goes on. Lots of cool things that you can do with the uh, in-shield animation. The one that I really like is when you go in-shield uh, mid-air. Whee! <laughs> oh yeah, you can even go from a um, aerial into a shield, then into a slide, and then into a fall animation again. So yeah, it looks doesn't look like much, but uh, lots of effort has been put into this. And I, I do think it shows. It's so cool. 
All right, so I changed the whole state machine. I now based it on the Limbo AI. It's the same add-on that I'm going to use for the behavior tree. I'm gonna tell you all about it in a future video, but the behavior tree will make it so that we can actually fight enemies, enemies that have their own intelligence, their, their own AI. All right, but I get distracted so fast. Uh, this video is about Coyote time and the buffer jump. So let's start with the buffer jump. So why implement the buffer jump? It's a fairly easy question to answer. Uh, normally with your default game, your jump code looks something along the lines of if you press jump, the space bar, and you are on the floor, then jump, which, you know, sounds about right. But in reality, this is not enough. Sometimes the player is just one pixel away from the floor from a previous jump, and then they press spacebar to jump again, and they won't jump because they are technically still in the air. And you could say that that's a skill issue, and you're not entirely wrong there, but most game developers apply this thing called buffer jump to smoothen out that experience. I added this little logic that makes it so whenever you fall and you're almost at the ground and then you press jump, the game will wait until you touch the floor and then you will still immediately jump. That is what is called buffer jump. And before this improvement, there was no way that you could actually bunny hop like this because some of these jumps are technically still in the air and will get completely ignored without buffer jump. If you don't fully understand yet, don't you worry, we are about to go to the tutorial segment of this video and I will show you the code and also tell you how you can implement it yourself. Oh yeah, I forgot about this little um, improvement. Aiden now turns his head when he's like very close to a uh, platform. You can also push. It really annoyed me how the sprite was constantly um, clipping through the uh, 3D objects. So yeah, this looks way better. I might make a separate video about this topic alone, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out. Alright, the coyote time. Um, if you are old like me, you might remember this cartoon. So what you basically saw there is when the character falls off a cliff, uh, they need a couple of milliseconds to actually realize that they're about to fall. And within that little time, the physics don't really apply, and theoretically you could still jump. So you could add coyote time right after you run off a cliff, just like this, and still make it so you can jump in air. Just like the buffer jump example, you can only jump when you are touching the floor. Uh, but what happens when you press spacebar, jump, one frame after leaving the platform? You fall, you, you don't jump. And you could say that's a skill issue, and you know, technically speaking, you are right, but it's, it's also a very frustrating experience for the end user, and you want to prevent that. So by adding this little coyote time, a few frames after, you know, falling off a cliff, you make it so that the player is still able to jump. Just like this. Did you see that? Technically speaking, I was not on the platform, but the game still allowed me to jump. So yeah, that's basically it. The player movement has been improved big time. You can bunny hop like an idiot. And, you know, and the system is a bit more forgiving whenever you press jump right after falling. Oh, I really like the animations, man. They look so cool. Um, oh yeah, uh, you, you guys are probably waiting for the tutorial part, so um, let, let's get to it. All right, you are looking at a tutorial version of my project. I basically stripped down all the artwork. Uh, the turtle is replaced by the pill-shaped mesh. Uh, and I also will make this project available for you guys. So feel free to download this via the GitHub link that I will provide in the description of this video. So assuming that you know how to download GitHub projects and how to open them, you can go to the scripts folder, uh, the player folder, and then the player.gd. I tried to make this tutorial file as least overwhelming as possible. So I removed all the state machine logic and I narrowed it down to just one code file for the player movement and the coyote time and buffer jump. 
Assuming that you know the basics of 3D game development in Godot, if not, go and watch my previous video, it's, 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 right, it's right over here, then you know what the physics process does. In this case, it handles the player input and then also moves the player in the 3D world. In this tutorial file, we have some separate functions called handled buffer jump, handled coyote jump and handle camera. And this little function right over here deserves some explanation. Um, you are probably using your own state machine or your own logic that stores the current state of your character. And since this tutorial is not using a state machine, I had to make this uh, non-optimal function just for the tutorial to make it so that this variable right over here is always telling you what state the character is in. You can also see it when you debug the game at the top left corner. When you're idle, it says idle, move, jump, fall, jump, fall. It's a fake state machine to make this tutorial make sense. All right, let's check out the buffered jump first. Here you go. This is the logic that makes the magic happen. Whenever you press spacebar, in this case, still the default UI accept input, and the character is not on the floor, which means the character is falling, then we are going to set this far, has buffered jump, to true. We are also going to set this timer, since buffered jump timer, to zero. This if statement checks whether the has buffered jump is set to true, and if that's the case, we are going to add to the timer that we previously set to zero. So this is going to be incremented every single frame. And whenever it hits like this buffer time that we set right on top of the code file, right over here, buffer time, 0 0.2. Then we are going to set buffer jump to false and also reset the timer. So these two if statements make it so that there's only this little window of time where the has buffer jump is being set to true. Namely, from the moment when you press spacebar in the air until the moment the timer is being incremented right over here hits the buffer time. And having this piece of logic that resets the buffer jump is very important because if you remove it then you will be able to buffer jump way too much in advance like when you are still in the air like this you see what happened there i pressed jump the moment i started to fall way ahead of even touching the ground like jump and then it still jumps that's not what you want that's gonna cause confusion not user friendly at all the next piece of code actually handles the jump itself. Um, it's pretty simple. The moment there is still a buffer jump set to true, if has buffer jump, and the character hits the floor, then jump. And that's it. We set the has buffer jump to false and also restart the timer. So now by hitting spacebar, and I will do it extra hard so you can hear it in the video, just before hitting the floor, it will still jump. See? Amazing, you can buffer jump now. Let's go to the coyote time. All right, let me explain you the handle coyote jump function, which is being called in every single frame yet again. We have a if statement right over here that checks whether the character is not on the floor, which means the character is falling. So that makes it so that the else part of this if statement is when the character is on the floor. Whenever the character is on the floor, we are going to set the fall window timer to the coyote time. And the coyote time is a constant that we have defined right over here. And it's being set to 0.1. So every time when you are on the ground, it is being set to 0.1. It's a positive number, remember that. And since we are on the ground, we're also going to set just jumped to false because we're not jumping. That's going to make sense in just a bit. But when the character is falling, we are going to subtract that number 
that we just set to 0.1 by the delta. And in this way, there's going to be this very small window where the fall window timer is a positive number from 0.1 to 0 and below because we are constantly subtracting it while falling. And that's very important to remember because in the next part we are going to check whether the, the player is hitting spacebar, jump. We're also going to check whether the character is falling. You can obviously replace that with your own logic. We're going to check whether the character has already jumped within that window of time because otherwise you can do this infinite jump, you know, that's not something that we want. And lastly, and most importantly, we're going to check whether the fall window timer is still in the positive. So we're going to check if it's greater than zero. And if this if statement returns true, we are going to jump and we're going to set the just jump var to true to prevent the infinite jumping. And you can ignore this code line because you are probably using your own state machine instead of this fake state machine that I fabricated for this tutorial. I really hope this was helpful to you. I am completely aware that this is not optimal code. Uh, I'm just a fellow beginner in the Godot, in the Godot community. And I just wanted to tell you about the existence of the buffer jump and the Coyote time. I wanted to show you a way to create those little windows where you can still jump after falling. And you know, if this somewhat ignites some, you know, better code on your end, if you get inspired and you come up with a way better logic, then, then my mission is completed. If this video was helpful to you, make sure to like and subscribe and say something nice in the comment section below. I'm going to make tutorials about the art style, the pixel art, animation, uh, more about the state machines in the Limbo AI. I'm also planning to make a video about the ray casting that I implemented so my character doesn't clip through the platforms, you know, when the turtle was like turning his head. Lots of cool stuff incoming, so subscribe and I see you guys around in the next video or stream. Bye bye.